Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishNetwork.com, and I'm here on another beautiful day testing a frog lure. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> So, what frog lure am I testing today? That is the Booyah Pad Crasher Jr. Let me take it up close so you can see. There it is. Take a look at the back. There is something particular about this one that is very similar to the Seville Pivot Frog. And that thing is the weighted system. So, in the last one you saw that the weighted system kept the frog on its belly, which is what a real frog does. Most frog lures just have the hook and that's the weight of the hook. But when you're moving it through, you know, weeds and grass, it can tend to flip over or over over um, compensate when it when it rolls to one side and then you have an upside down frog, which means it's a dead frog. That's not what you want to do. A bass is smarter than that. It knows something's up. It's gonna stop following the frog to the edge of the lily pad and then stop biting. So a weighted system is very important. Now the, uh, the Booyah Bait Paddy Crasher Junior, you can get the, the regular size as well, has a weighted system and it's internal. Unlike the weight being attached to the actual hook, well this one is too, but it's not showing on the outside. The Seville had the hook, which was a really big offset hook, just like you have in a worm, on the outside of the frog and it was cut on the butt of the frog like this. So when it squeezed the frog, the hook would came exposed and then a giant hook one itself, which worked very well. If you saw the last video, take a look at that. But on this one, the weight is actually internal to the frog. You can't see it. So halfway down the hook, you can see very clearly that there's no weight on there, but it's heavy. So I know right after that point, somewhere between the head, the eye of the hook, and halfway down the double, it says a double hook on both sides of the butt, like it's, which is traditional, it has a weight. And it's pretty hefty. This one, what is the weight? don't actually know. Apparently the ants aren't happy with me. I landed on their grand hill. They're going crazy right there. And crawling on me and biting me. Huh. Ants in my pants. Pull my arm. So I don't know the exact weight of this. It's not written on the package, which is not a good thing. Most fishing lures actually have the weight on there. So what we're going to do, we're in the exact same spot that I caught that fish, when well, I caught, I hooked a fish on the Seville Pivot Frog and lost it. And it was a big boy. And it walked away with my lure in its mouth, which doesn't make me happy. But I am seeing something in the water that, no, that's not my my bait. I would love to see my, my frog lure just sitting here and I could just go in the water and get it. But it's gonna rust out after a while and the fish will be fine. But my lure will be gone. It's probably in Boston by now. So we're gonna hook this on see if it does what it says it does. So we've got our Booyah Pad Crasher Junior set up here. Same knot, same line, except I, I, I had the same line. I changed it with fresh one I was stored in a, a cool dark place. It's Berkeley Trialing XT that broke last time. That was three years old. It's still three years old, but not three years old on the spinning reel. It was three years old in a container in the dark. Hopefully, uh, I think it was away from the off-gassing of plastics. So I might lose this one too, but I won't be as sad as the Seville Pivot. Of course, if I catch one, I'll be sad. <laughs> so, cast it out here. I think I have this, maybe, in the right direction. Should pay attention. Last time I was... I can see right now it's kind of digging through the pad instead of trying to flop on top. But it floats on the surface perfectly like a frog with the eyeball showing. It's getting stuck under the pad when I pull it. What I'm looking for. Excuse me. Just going to adjust the direction of this.
That might be a little better. Let's see what's going on. I was wondering if I throw in the open water just out of the range of the lily pad will be something there that just takes it. Like as soon as it drops. It just happened before at a place called Horn Pond. It was just right there that that bass blew up on me. Boom! He nailed that thing. This time, nothing yet. Of course, that was after I cast it ten times, so he must have been rolling by and said, hmm, something's happening over here. Now, I'm noticing that this almost feels heavier than the pillar frog, just by a little bit. Okay, just realized I got caught on a, a lily pad and it flipped over for a second. I saw the yellow belly. So, hmm. As far as getting through the weeds easily, something's wrong with this. It's getting stuck under all the lily pads and coming out on the other side on top and then going back under again and going on top. Now, I've watched plenty of frogs in my day and they do swim under the lily pad sometimes. So maybe that is a a good thing, but moving a lot of lily pads in front of the, of the uh, frog, which kind of might scare the fish, I'm not sure. I'm very happy to catch one for you, show you, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. Sometimes. <laughs> it is roasty toasty hot out here. Now, bass isn't the only thing you can use a frog for. Another good fish to use frogs for is snakehead. Now, if you're in Virginia, Merlin area, in the Potomac River, they have taken over. You see any lily pads, or there's a huge grass mats everywhere that go out damn near till the to the um, to the center of the river, and they are all up in there. And you know, after a couple casts, you'll start to see lily pads move, and Bass doesn't do that. That is a snakehead. Keep throwing in there, and next thing you know, you might have yourself a 10, 15 pounder. That will whoop your butt for a while and be a great catch. But then once you get it in, you won't really want to mess with it. I know some people, they, they cut its heads off because they don't want it to be there. It's an invasive species. I think from China or something. Or they, like, hit, take out their gun, and they shoot it, which is, you know, that's cool, too. They aren't supposed to be there. People are trying to catch them, but they're they're growing and populating too fast, and they're eating up all the forage, and eating up some of the predators too, even bass, and really just taking away some of the natural fishery around there, which isn't nice. I don't know if they eat crabs, but as far as I know, they eat everything, especially bait fish. So if you're ever around there, and you got a frog, do the world a service. Catch a snakehead. So I'm seeing this flip over several times. I believe just from a few minutes of been fishing, it's not as good as the set the uh, Sabil pivot frog. That is still the number one frog I've used. The KBD sexy frog that's took in water. After three casts, it was it was full of water. I'm not sure if I got a, a bad manufactured one and the hole was too big or what. Maybe you have a comment about that. But for me, the one I got just isn't good. I almost brought it today just to go frog fishing. But I figured I might as well do a review. And this one's okay, but not great. I do realize if I slow down the frog, I can almost wiggle it in between lily pads. Like it's trying to swim and push out and push away the lily pads on its way there. 
That was kind of natural. I think I want to slow it down, just like Bill Dan says. You ain't catch a fish, just slow down. And then slow down some more. And then slow down some more. No problem, it's so fast. Take like three swims and they take a break. I'm moving like an inch at a time. Here we go. Slow as I can go. Getting little splashes in the water. It's going on top of the lily. I'm sitting. I'm waiting. Reeling here. There's one more. Oop. I'm on another lily pad. And another lily pad. In the water. Another lily pad. Pushing lily pads apart. Coming down the middle. I'm stuck. Oh, big jump. Move the whole foot and a half. My line's getting caught. Oh, oops. I'm just going to let it sit there for a second. I have to wipe my eyes. Sweating to wipe my eyes. Oh! Just missed a bite, y'all. Just missed a bite, and it was in open water in between lily pads. Must have been sitting there for 30 seconds, and I, no big splash, I saw a face come up and then a, a very small swirl, and then my lord disappeared. And then it reappeared by the time I had hooked it. Can't see, it's right over there. Let's see. Let's see if he's still there. I wonder if a bird would come down. If my presentation's so good, a bird will come down and eat my frog. Till then, you're not a master at frog fishing. Oh, man, I got a bite. This is good. Bill Dance, you know your thing. Slow down. Take your time. Take my frog. I'm not sure the size of that fish either. The last one I got. That was a big one. Oh, so hurts. So hurts. Have anybody else ever almost caught a fish and you know it's huge and you're telling that fish tail and they're like, all right, quit the bullshit. No a phenomenon of my line getting caught in a lily pad. Some trying to keep it a little taller, but it's still... Uh, I don't know about using Berkeley. Try lean XT anymore. Come on. Ah. I have a little technique of like letting a frog sit on a lily pad, and I try to keep it on a lily pad while moving the lily pad to like alert fish that there's something on a lily pad, and they come and check it out. Kind of like ringing that door that dinner bell. And then, after, you know, 20, 30 seconds, light them up. Oh, man. I'm thinking maybe I should move to a different spot. Man, I just got a bite. Uh, I can't they just eat it. Maybe that, maybe, maybe the reason I missed that was because of the actual lure itself. Are those two weeds? Yeah, I'm going to blame on the lure. <laughs> Not me. It, it, it's almost always you. Yeah. Or he just didn't get the whole frog. Just get the legs. All possible.
last. Come on, baby. Show me. Froggy. Come on. Last. <laughs> Sorry for my commentary. I, I talk less when I'm looking. Let's see a boat go by. Don't be alarmed. Skull. That's the kind of boat that is. So, at least try to one bass into trying to bite it. Didn't engulf it like the first one did. So, here's what I'm going to do. I think I worked this spot. Got a bite. Let's try one more spot. And call this done. So, we got in another spot. It's not but 20 feet away. Maybe not 20. Maybe 50 feet away. I see a cassette tape in the bottom of the water. <laughs> And we're gonna see what's over here. It's hard to put these low branches above me. I got the camera like right on the edge of the water, so it might fall in and get wet. But it's possible. Hopefully you can see this. If not, sorry. Hopefully you see the fish that it catches better. Open spot right here. This is something there. This side now. Oh, there's an overhanging tree over here. There's an overhanging tree slash log. I mean, slash log pad. Maybe a type of thing. So we'll sit there. Last one wasn't there anything. Like so the first one. We could just roam it. Okay, this spot due diligence too. 